one. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mega Agent Mondays. I am super excited because today I have with me the incredible Catherine Rain. Catherine, welcome. Thank you for having me, Natasha. Excited to have you. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Who is Catherine? Sure, so um, I'm from Germany originally. I came to this country 16 years ago as a nanny, as an au pair. And I was an actress in Germany and a stand-up comedian in the United States after I finished being a nanny. And um, then somehow I got into real estate. It was totally not on my mind. And it took me like a year to finally sign up with an office. And I walked into this office and I remember seeing the pictures of all the ALC members on the walls. And I looked up to them and I was so inspired by people that were doing better and bigger things than me. And I used them as an inspiration to become, you know, something better than I was at that time. And I uh, did my first deals and, you know, funny enough, I started to like real estate and I figured out it's totally my thing. It's totally up my alley. I love negotiating deals. And here I am now, 11 years later, I'm back at KW Miami Beach. And um, I sell around 80 houses a year. Last year, close to 50 million in production, and I'm a solo agent. Awesome! You've done incredibly well. Thank um, you. you know, you've I've watched your journey from kind of the beginning to where you are today. You also have a mega agent team office, like or, or mm -hmm. individual mega agent yeah. office mm -hmm. offsite, which not everyone gets the opportunity to have. So you, yeah. clearly, you've qualified for that, right? Um, in the last year or so, I know that you're now in Gary Keller's group. Yes. The top one. Two hundred. years. Two years now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you're just continuing to learn and grow um, as you do. What have been some of the biggest lessons for you in this business? What are some of the things you've learned? There's a lot of things I've learned. Um, I have to say, in the beginning, the first year, I cried almost every day. Because it's, let's be honest, it's a tough business. And I don't think I... In the beginning, I, I really questioned a lot of time if I'm made for this business because I am a very empathetic person and I am sometimes not as strong as people think I am. <laughs> and over the years, I have learned to become stronger and uh, the lessons I've learned is you just got to move on and if somebody knocks you down, you need to get up. You need to just continue your path. And it's not about how many people you know, it's not how big of a database you have, it's not about how many cold calls you do, it's about how many times you get knocked down and get back up. So that was for me one of the, the biggest lessons I had to learn. And now people are like, oh, you're so strong, you're so aggressive when you put in offers. And they really don't know where I was coming from because I was not like that when I started. <laughs> you mean you didn't have the shield of armor when you began? No. No. Right. Awesome. So our business is really all lead, you know, it's lead generation, yes. right? It's lead mm -hmm. listings and leverage. Mm -hmm. Where does most of your business come from today? So most of my business comes from repeats and referrals. I do have a big network of referral agents that send me referrals. I mean, yesterday I got five referrals. Saturday I got six. Um, so I do have a lot of referral agents that I work with and then the past clients. So I always want to tell my clients, listen, I want you to be my client forever. And I build really deep relationships with my clients. They call me when they want to paint their house. They, they call me when, when they want to change their kitchen. And they basically ask me for approval because they want to know if it affects the resale value and in which way it does. So for me, this is a huge value. I'm, I'm really friends. They're, they're like friends and family for me, my clients. So I, I built my business not on cold calling, not on um, door knocking, but on relationships with clients and delivering an exceptional service and, you know, word of mouth. So what are some of those things? Because I've watched, you know, we've just come through, you know, almost two years of a pandemic and I've watched your business continue to grow. What are some of those special things you do for your clients? We'll talk about your agent referrals, but, I, you know, let's hone in your, the your clients. Yeah, for your past clients. What are some of those things that you do to keep you top of mind, to stay connected? So I send them, obviously, market updates, uh, like, you know, most agents do, but I also send gifts. Four times a year they get uh, a touch in the mail. Uh, you know, two years ago we sent every client uh, during Christmas PJs for the whole family. It was a very expensive um, gift <laughs> that year. 
but uh, clients are still using them. So probably this year we're going to put new ones out because they're outgrowing them, they're children. Um, we uh, do photo shoots twice a year for Easter and, and the holidays. Uh, we just touch base with them and we call them. I, I never call a client asking, who do you know that wants to buy or sell or invest in real estate? I think that's, that's for me, the tackiest thing to say. I mean, it might work for other people. But I just check in and say, how are you? What can I do for you? How can I help you during those difficult times? And I just come from contribution. I, I believe that if you give value to people, they will value you in return. Absolutely, and that's obviously worked for, mm -hmm. for you, right? Yes. You continue mm -hmm. to help. You do something similar with realtors because your um, the attraction that you have from the realtor community is also mm -hmm. large and it's probably the largest of most of the agents that I've seen. Tell me what you do to continue to foster that business and those relationships. Sure. Um, so, um, you know, first of all, I speak on a lot of, um, you know, uh, team meetings with other offices, speak on a lot of panels. I do a lot of keynote speeches um, across the country. So, I, again, I'm giving value to other agents. And during the pandemic, I know a lot of agents were not doing that well and they uh, really needed help um, mentally and also financially, some of them were really not closing any deals. So I just checked in with all my partner agents and I spent hours, um, you know, helping them through their, their crisis. And I also helped them find new clients and lead generate by giving them, basically I was coaching a lot of agents. And I think um, when people see that you're there for them in times of crisis, it really um, strengthens the relationship and that's you know just being there for people it's not you don't need to uh, yes i do send them gifts and cards and stuff like that but if you give people your time i think that's the biggest gift it's the most valuable gift right yes. that most people undervalue exactly they they think you have to send wine and, and gifts to people but if you just give your time to people I mean, I have also a few new agents that I'm that I'm mentoring, and they send me as a thank you a, a five dollar Starbucks card, which I think is so cute. Where I'm like, you know, you don't really need to send me anything because for me, like the biggest return is to see them grow and and you know, blossom. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. Your social media. You know, mm -hmm. you came out of the gate pretty strong as a new agent with social media, and. Part of your generation, clearly, <laughs> and I still watch you today. Talk to us a little bit about that because you are pretty strong with your social media presence. Yeah, I, you know what? I could be better. There's people that are much better in social media, and I, you know, I'm always trying to grow and get better. I do have, I, I have to say, I, I do have a social media manager. She puts all this like just listed, just sold, just you know, all this stuff because for me, this. It's not really value to my clients. <laughs> like I want to show them, okay, hey, the interest rates are going up in a month. So if you're thinking of buying by now, because in a month you're gonna, you know, your ability to buy the four hundred thousand dollar house is gonna go down to three seventy five. So um, I, I like to bring value. So I try to post things that are of value to the clients. And yes, sometimes I post a lot. <laughs> sometimes I post less. I try to do a lot of videos. Again, you know, giving value to the clients and giving back, and I do get a lot of business from social media. I guess. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I've known that about you. The other thing that I've really watched and admired is what you've done personally. So mm -hmm. a lot of realtors get in the business and they think, you know, they hear the word wealth building and they think selling real estate is that. Exactly. And at the end of the day, we know the wealth building mm -hmm. comes from our own investing in, in exactly. real estate, right? Talk to us about that because you've done incredible stuff with your with your you know portfolio and kind of what you're doing with your rental properties. Thank you. Um, so I own 14 properties and I am financially free since last year. So what I've done is yes, I do sell a lot of homes and I do have great income, um, but I also always live below my means. Uh, I have clients that I know make way less money than me and they buy a bigger house than me. And I always kind of, you know, lived really below what I was able to afford. And I mean, until three years ago, I lived in a small two bedroom house with my two children. And I just upgraded three years ago when I could have done that much earlier. But at that time, I decided to spend the money on investment properties. So when other people went on vacation and went to Starbucks every day and went shopping and, and bought the things, 
or an ex a really expensive car, I kind of, you know, uh, use the money in a different way. It's not that I didn't spend the money, I just didn't spend it on things, I spend it on financial freedom. So I invested every dollar back into real estate because after all, we sit at the source. So when you go to a listing appointment, you should really always ask yourself, is that something I wanna buy? Because you are your first customer and if you don't think this way, you have gotta really change your mindset because with your clients, you get your 3%, that's it. I mean, I don't really think 3% is really a lot when I think back on the people that I made wealthy and what did they give me in return for the like hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars that they gained in equity. They didn't send me a thank you note five years later. So um, always think of yourself first as the customer and um, this is how I've done it. And now I have a portfolio of commercial properties, condos, single family homes and vacation rentals. And I'm always looking to buy more. And I do work with a lot of agents that bring me deals that are off market. And you know, the thing that I always do, I let the agents keep all the commission because what is 3% again, if somebody can give me a good deal or something off market. Yeah, it's definitely an opportunity and everyone should be thinking about that. Yeah. Not just in their backyard, because you've bought property outside of your own backyard, yes. right? Yes, yes. You've got to be open to thinking about where are these opportunities exactly. to lock ourselves in. You need to learn how to analyze deals and you need to learn how to look at numbers. So I was, I, I, I bought where I never thought I would buy 12 hours from us. I just, you know, booked a vacation rental and then I sat on the balcony and I looked uh, on the KW app and saw houses were cheap and I said, my husband this is a gold mine, let's buy and then a year later we have five houses in the mountains. So, uh, you know, you gotta be open. And I know a lot of people that have analysis paralysis, so they don't wanna make a move because they're so paralyzed in making a wrong decision that they never do anything. And that's the same with like social media or videos. A lot of people are like, yeah, I wanna do video, but I wanna take a class, I wanna get an editing software, I wanna get all the equipment. No, just do it. Sometimes you just gotta jump on things and do it because perfection really is overrated. Did I know what I was doing with the vacation rentals? No. Um, could, it, could it have gone wrong? Yeah, it could have gone wrong, but I'm pretty good with my numbers and um, it actually went much better than expected. So, you know, sometimes you have to take a risk in order to uh, take a profit. Absolutely. So what's your vision for your future? What's next? Um, so I, you know, I really like wealth building and building wealth for people, so I would really, uh, I, I, and I love numbers, so I uh, I really want to get more into that. And now, over the last year, I've noticed there is a lot of people calling me with 1031 exchanges. Financial advisors are calling me, stockbrokers are calling me, and they, when I talk to them, they are like, wow, you, you really know your stuff. And I, I love that. So that's my favorite thing, like building wealth for people. So I want to do something in, with that. I don't know what it is yet, but... Um, I want to dive more into that. It's, it's just something that I really love. I want to leverage myself a little bit more because you know selling 80 houses a year is, is quite a lot uh, to take on by myself. So maybe I'm gonna you know have some buyers agents. I yeah. So, so you are considering a team a little bit now. Maybe maybe if, if I find the right people, I, I might. <laughs> Always about the right people. <laughs> Yes. Talk, talk about that. You know, you, you know. I know we've had these conversations, right, about maintaining balance. Yes. How do you do that? Well, because you're busy, Catherine. Not yes, only do you busy. sell homes, but you're a mom. I don't know that everybody knows that yes. about you your whole life, right? Yeah, I have two children. They're seven and thirteen. I had them young. Uh, it was a mess, and it was crazy, and it was messy, and uh, you know, it it was just chaos. But I'm glad I, you know, I'm kind of, you know, now all my friends have little kids and I'm like, ah, let's hang out when your kids are bigger, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, it's, it's busy. I mean, I, I want to say my husband is very supportive. My husband does most of the stuff with the kids and my husband takes care of all of our investments. So he doesn't have a nine to five job. Otherwise I couldn't do what I'm doing. Um, but... I think like having a balance is a total myth. You have to get 
you know, get out of balance to, to achieve your goals. And then you just have to focus on getting back into balance. Right now, I'm very unbalanced. I'm a little bit stressed out. You can probably feel it. Um, because I don't really have any help right now and I just hired uh, someone you know new that helps me behind the scenes and I didn't have anyone for like five weeks so it was like close to a nervous breakdown <laughs> we won't let that happen <laughs> but you know I was a little bit out of balance now I'm trying to get back into balance and it's just you know that's how it is in our business some months we're busier some months we're we're um, you know it's slower and it's all about like okay I get out of balance go to the massage studio and like you know do some self-care go to the chiropractor get your hair self-care. get your hair done i haven't done it in months <laughs> but uh you know you have to set priorities my husband is like oh my god the house looks like a mess i'm like that's not my priority right now you know so yeah i mean balance you just have to wing it sometimes i think gary says the best like balance is bomb like there is no real balance yeah, right it's exactly. about counterbalancing and exactly. so you know taking a little bit longer of a vacation so you can drive a little harder on the work side exactly yeah i okay. took a three-week vacation over christmas but it was long i'm like i was sitting there last week i'm like i'm gonna get back <laughs> <laughs> i know you were antsy to get back to i know work. it was a lot what's your crystal ball for the future in real estate yeah I think that um, on the long term, um, we're going to see less buyer's agents. That's just my guess because the buyers nowadays are so savvy and have the internet at their fingertips. So I think that it's, uh, it might shift to that the, uh, actually the buyers have to pay their own buyer's agents if they choose to use one. Um, that, that's just my guess. And as far as real estate in general, I just think it's going to plateau over the next year a little bit and it's not going to be such a crazy market anymore because the interest rates are going up. Um, but for, for KW, I have like really great, um, I have really great uh, expectations and great predictions. I think that we're going to be doing really well. Um, we have a lot of exciting things coming, the sports and entertainment industry, a relocation division, and then we have a few other things coming that I've heard in the back. So. Um, I think that people in general will always need a realtor despite all those like open door and what, what all, I know we're not supposed to say names, <laughs> despite all those online buying companies because, um, you know, yes, uh, sometimes our industry has a bad name because of all the 99% of people that are not doing their job. So let's be the 1% that sticks out of the crowd because I know people hire me because they know I'm not like the other 99%. And we have an opportunity being with KW to be the 1% that is just amazing, gives amazing service, and that people want to work with us and value our service. That's awesome. What would be the one piece of advice you would want to leave our audience with? Last parting thought. Okay, so for me, um, over the last two years, what I've really learned is to qualify the people. It saved me uh, a lot of time. Uh, you need to make sure that people are willing and able and uh, quick to buy or sell and motivate it. And um, I do now all my homework up front. I have a very thorough buyer and seller's consultation. My buyers look at three houses and pick one. I don't show 20 homes anymore. My sellers know if the property doesn't sell in three weeks, you're going to have a price reduction. Setting expectations has been a huge game changer for me um, not just as far as um, you know we're not going to ask for anything after inspection um, but also putting people on agreements like I don't work with anyone without a bias agreement I don't have time so if Mark doesn't want to sign if he doesn't want to sign a bias agreement then Mark has to find a different agent because I'd rather filter him out in the beginning than have trouble later because if he's not willing to sign that bias agreement in the beginning, he's going to cheat on me later and then I'm going to cry. So I don't want to cry and I want to work with people that I love and that appreciate me and that I like to give value and um, you know my advice is set expectations and filter people out. It will make your life so much easier. That is great advice. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Catherine, thanks so much for being here You're today. With us. This was awesome, and I know our audience learned a lot. Good, awesome. All right, until next Monday, see you all. Have a great week.